Hey, welcome back to Evil's Comics. I am Evil Mike, and I got a review for you. I started with my new comics, and we are at my first read, and actually, what a good read. And this is from a Blaze Comics. This is Porcelain from, it is, uh, it's actually done, uh, written and art by Maria Lovett. It is uh, letterings by Sadia Timofonte, and it has a whole bunch of different covering artists. This cover artist is Sabine Rich, and I didn't even know it, but it is an homage cover to Batman and Harley Quinn, I think. Hold on one second, I can get very specific, but it is a, yeah, Batman Harley Quinn parody cover. Um, so pretty cool. I mean, I did like the cover, so I mean, it did speak to me. And I guess that's why I'd be in a Batman and Harley Quinn cover, but I mean, I do see it now. Alright, so what this comic is in a nutshell, it is kind of a horror title. Uh, you kind of get that from the front. Back on the back cover, it says, Welcome to the Dollhouse. Um, basically, we, we enter the story in a dream sequence, and it follows the main character, Beryl. And Beryl here is having a dream, and um, technically it doesn't even look like Beryl. It could be somebody else. This could be like a completely different person. Um, we just know that somebody is dreaming, and she's dreaming of being you know, like kidnapped, and she gets this number on her forehead. Um, and we see like our first doll. And right here on the doll forehead, too, she has the number on her head. So the number, I take it, does play significance. It does say right here, it says, an anonymous quote, there are always two choices, two paths to take. One is easy, and its only reward is that it is easy. And that's pretty true. I mean, uh, there, there, there's a reason you got the hard and easy. Um, I generally like to take the hard path. It's, it's a lot more rewarding. Uh, it feels a lot more satisfying. Uh, we're... we're Awoken up here in the northern desert red forest route and it's just it shows up on the shack We see that there is something going on the rooftop here We kind of close in on the rooftop and there's like a little garden and we are introduced to Beryl and she was taking a nap So that's why I say I think that was her dreaming, but um She's taking a nap chilling on the roof um, it seems like her mom starts screaming at her. It never... Oh, no, it's her aunt mail. I'm sorry. It's her aunt mail, and her aunt mail starts screaming about her. Like, hey, it's time for you to wake up. You know, and she kind of has this whole, like, you know, I, I need you to go to the store, but I also, you, I also want you to get your life back on track kind of thing. You know, you should be going out to the city, doing better things with your life. She agrees to go out to the store, so she gets up. She has her little cat friend that's with her that has a nice little bow tie on his tail and uh, they, they head out to go get the water. The Aunt Mel mentions um, not to go off the beaten track to you know just go to the store. She does make it to the store after traveling through the desert for a little bit and uh, there is like an interaction it's kind of interesting but there's a, a a moment where money is passed and it's like it's it's right here but it looks like a, some star jewelry or something like that like it's the size of their hand but then it's it's actual metal and it's yeah, it's, it's kind of cool um as she's walking back there's this house that is it, it's shown you know far away so it looks small at first but the house is shown over here that is is really really big but it, it's making music and traveling along and of course it comes near it parks right along where she's where you know where she's walking she hears the music and is drawn in <clears throat> and the next pages we just see her you know drop the water and get close to the house and as soon as she gets close to the house wow, somehow she is like sucked in by this like demon thing's tongue and it even grabs the cat and yanks him in the next thing we know uh, Beryl is here inside the dollhouse this is the dollhouse and she's kind of just walking around there is a uh, different framed like this one says Thanatos and um, I, I did look up Thanatos it's really weird to explain that but um, there is another one uh, Eros and Eros is like a double meaning it, it, and in Greek it was like uh, one of the words described to use as like Cupid the the god of love 
but it also is like in Freudian terms, like um, like uh, like uh, it means like the the protection of the like basic needs, basically. Like when we get down to our like primal, like uh, what what we defend and stuff like that it's kind of like the protection of those basic need thoughts type thing and that's what what eros means so you'd have to look it up and get your own kind of idea of it is but it is psychology and and it's freudian um so i think i, I want to say it's not the the cupid you know metaphor that they're going for with the eros because the thanatos if you look it up it kind of leads into the secondary explanation of that why that's there um, she's still stumbling through the dollhouse and of course she makes it into some room and we meet a whole bunch of uh, dolls we do see the the character from the cover and he's kind of chilling back here in the cover um, we do see all the numbers they, they all have specific numbers on their heads and some some vary like I see a, like a 36 uh, the twins have like a it looks like a 25 and a 49 I don't know, some of the numbers are really hard to see, but we do see that they kind of pan into the fox here. Um, the next thing we know is just everybody screaming at her, eat, please eat, 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 and she does eat, and, and it looks all scrumptious at first, and when she kind of takes a bite, it's like got maggots and it's rotten. Um, they do have this cool scene where they show her what she ate, and it goes through her body, and it looks like right here when she ate it, it's kind of changing, and like, I mean, as it goes through, it basically like starts forming. It looks like a rose inside her body. Um, they do cut back out to this, and we have uh, the doll sculptor that appears, and she starts talking to Beryl. She knows Beryl's name. She she welcomes her and uh, tells her that that her that her that her skin is is very nice and it's a lot like porcelain. And and they were kind of hoping she would come along to the dollhouse. Um, the sculptor does reach out to touch uh, Beryl and, and, and Mr. Kitty uh, did not like that and, and, and looked like he, he's trying to protect her. He hisses very heroically. Um, but that is it from the first issue. Uh, I mean, first off, uh, it's not a very, it's very quick. The pacing is very nice. Um, I did love all the art and the story so far it has me intrigued. There is a, uh, you know, what's coming next in the second issue, so I can give you a little taste. Uh, it says, the appearance, the appearance of a mysterious guy may be of some comfort for Barrow. For Barrow. It says, uh, but the more she learns about the dollhouse, the more frightening and confusing it becomes. With no easy exit in sight, she must keep her wits about her and find the way out before she is turned into a doll herself and stuck there forever. So it looks like that's what the main juice of the story is going to be. It's, it's, it's basically Beryl trying to get out of this, this fantastical dollhouse that she has entered somehow. And it, it seems if she does not get out in a certain amount of time, she will be turned into a doll herself. Um, and it kind of looks like this, this uh, Mr. Mr. Fox or Mrs. Fox uh, might be some of the entertainment that might uh, keep Beryl interested in, in staying in said dollhouse. Um, so first read is really good. Um, um, if you have not checked this out, I suggest picking it up. Seems like it will be very good read. Like the, you know, usually the first read is like the best read, but some of the good writers, some of the good artists like to put the juice in number two and number three, you know. Um, but that's Evil has to say about this book. Um, let me know if you read it. If you didn't, you know, did it sound interesting about, you know, from what I told you? Um, like, comment, subscribe. I love them comments, you know. Um, I'll be back. I gotta get more reading in. Y'all have a good one.